Hey everyone, this is Eddie Dole with Medicine. Today's video will talk about rhabdomyolysis, it's a medical condition characterized by rapid breakdown of skeletal muscles tissue, releasing intracellular components such as myoglobin, creatinine kinase, potassium, and phosphate into the bloodstream. Common triggers are trauma, it could be due to crush injuries, accidents, exertion, intense exercise, and heat stroke, especially. Drugs and toxins like alcohol, statin use, cocaine, amphetamines. Infections, it could be viral, bacterial. Metabolic or genetic disorders, enzyme deficiencies affecting muscle metabolism. Clinically, we have triad of symptoms. Three main symptoms that we see with rhabdomyolysis. Muscle pain, weakness, and dark colored urine. Although the symptoms are not always present in all patients. When present, muscle symptoms of rhabdomyolysis may develop over hours to days. And when present, muscle pain is typically most prominent in proximal muscle groups like thighs and shoulders and in the lower back and calves. Skin changes caused by ischemic tissue injuries such as discoloration of the skin or blisters may also be seen, but it's present, present only at less than 10% of the patients. Additional symptoms that are more common in severely affected patients include malaise, fever, tachycardia, nausea, and vomiting and abdominal pain. The most serious complication is acute kidney injury, which occurs due to nephrotoxic effects of myoglobin and other muscle breakdown products. Other complications can include electrolyte imbalances, such as hyperkalemia, high potassium level, which can lead to cardiac arrhythmias and metabolic acidosis. Compartment syndrome is a potential complication of severe rhabdomyolysis that may develop after fluid resuscitation with worsening edema of the limb and muscle. But compartment syndrome can also be a cause of rhabdomyolysis. It's both complication and cause uh, because it may occur after traumatic bone fracture or prolonged limb compression. To diagnose rhabdomyolysis, we use serum CK levels. It's a standard biomarker, typically greater than five times the upper limits of normal and usually greater than 5,000 units per liter. Laboratory findings include elevated CK, myoglobinuria, myoglobin in the urine, and other markers of muscle damage such as lactate dehydrogenase, uh, aspartate, amino transferase, AST, and serum level. If we think patient has rhabdomyolysis, we usually check alcohol level and toxicology screen because alcohol or drugs can contribute uh, or cause rhabdomyolysis. Although myoglobin in the urine is one of the classic findings, it's often absent because of the relative rapidity with which myoglobin is cleared and its absence does not exclude the diagnosis. Treatment, the recommended treatment focus on preventing complications. Like we said the most important, one of the most important complications is acute kidney injury, AKI, and electrolyte imbalances. The primary intervention is early and aggressive intravenous fluid resuscitation. We initiate intravenous fluid resuscitation as soon as possible, ideally within the first six hours after muscle injury. The goal is to achieve a urine output at least 300 ml per hour. Normal saline is typically used and the volume can be substantial, often requires several liters per day. We also monitor and correct electrolyte imbalances. Hyperkalemia is a common and potentially life-threatening complication that requires prompt treatment. Hypocalcemia and hyperphosphatemia should be also managed. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to watch our videos on hyperkalemia, what is ASD, and don't forget to join this channel. Uh, I'll see you on the next one.